day numeral dose of development camp is now in the books. And I had the chance to do a couple of one-on-one -on -one interviews with Charlie Letty and also Cam Squires. And I also have some bonus sound bites to share with you guys. There's a lot to talk about after day two of development camp. Buckle up, everybody. Your Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play by play announcer, Devils Rider for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part time credential media member, Trey Matthews. Once again, I'm coming to you live from RWJ Barnabas Health Hockey House, home of the practice facility for the New Jersey Devils, as day two of development camp has wrapped up. The Zamboni is on the rink trying to smoothen everything out. I do have my microphone, so I apologize for any background noise. I'll do my best to edit it out. And this is coming to you live shortly after everything just got uh, finished. So just giving you guys that full warning. Similar to yesterday's episode, I was able to get a ton of sound bites from a few prospects, including a couple of one-on-one -on -one interview. So we're going to start off with Charlie Letty. Now, Letty was selected in the fourth round, 128th overall back in the 2022 NHL draft. And according to Elite Prospects, he outweighs four checkers, steps to the inside, and then makes the pass. When not possible, he skates away from the passing target to encourage the four checker to chase, then pass cross ice. Now, Letty just wrapped up a season playing for Boston College, and I had the chance to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with him. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So it's just me asking him the questions. Take it away. So, Charlie, how you liking development camp so far? I, I mean, I love development camp. I uh, was just talking to Amanda about all this. Like, I love coming here, seeing all these guys. They're just a great group of guys. The staff is awesome, too. You know, coming out here just to compete every day with this level of talent is just super fun and super tight. For people who might be unfamiliar with your game, how would you describe it? What are some of your strengths? Yeah, my strengths are definitely like being able to transition pucks, being to see the ice very well, being able to make plays through the, through the defensive zone, just transitioning through the neutral zone, and just being able to play a hard, physical, strong type of defensive mean game. So it's kind of where I come from. Originally from Connecticut, where did hockey begin for you? Uh, hockey began with my dad. My dad played hockey growing up, played for Handham High School, played for Westminster Boarding School, and then played Trinity. Um, so, you know, he kind of tried to get me to go on the ice when I was young and it worked and I ended up loving the sport. So, you know, he's kind of always been my biggest fan and my biggest supporter since day one. What was the journey like, uh, like I said, being raised in Connecticut to now being selected in the fourth round by the Devils and what was the process like? Uh, yeah, you know, when you go through it, I mean, it's definitely like nerve wracking. It definitely like brings a little bit of jitters and butterflies into your stomach. But, you know, when you when you go through that process, you kind of just got to like relax a bit, take a step back and just do whatever you can to help yourself move up in that point and just be ever like take yourself wherever you want to go. Describe your past uh, year at Boston College. How did that go in your eyes? Yeah, I loved it. It was super fun. Um, I grew up as a Boston sports fan, so I love the city of Boston. I love the school itself. But the hockey aspect, I love our new coach, Greg Brown. Um, he's a great guy, great coach. And all my teammates are just, I mean, they're wonderful people. I all love them. I all get along with all of them. Super lovely people. But I really had no complaints about hockey this year. I, th I thought I played a good amount. I thought I played well most of the games. So, you know, you have a couple bad games here and there. But you learn from them. You learn from your mistakes and you just move on. For anybody who uh, missed it, what were some of your highlights this past season? Like, what was, like, best of the best in your mind? I mean, yeah, I, there's definitely a couple of PK scenarios where I would get in front of a lot of shots. I'd go through shifts where I'd block three or four shots a shift. So, And I'd have some big hits. I'd have good defensive plays, taking on rush coverage. And, you know, every now and then I'd get up in the play and join up and make a good play. So that was kind of my highlight package. What are your expectations and goals coming into the new year? Yeah, I mean, this off season I've been working a lot on my skating and uh, stick skills. So hopefully, like to see an improvement in that is one of my goals this year. And then also just like being able to play with a much calmer presence, being able to work calmer under pressure, and just being able to move, move pucks smoother. Obviously, the Devils have a an array of defensemen. You got 
people like Dougie Hamilton who are focused on the offensive side of things. You got John Marino, Yoda Siegenthaler, more of stay-at-home defensemen. You got a blossoming star in Luke Hughes. So uh, when you get to that point, how would you uh, fit in with the Devils uh, roster or maybe uh, Utica comments or when that when that time comes? I mean, whatever they tell me to do, I'll do. That's kind of how I play. If they need me to score 50 goals, I'll go try my best to score 50 goals. If they need me to not allow 50 goals, I'll just try to do that to the best of my ability. So that's kind of where I'm at. And whenever they need me, whatever they need me to do, I'm ready for it. And I'll go to war for them. Okay, last couple questions. How familiar were you with the Devils organization prior to being drafted? Uh, I was very familiar. I grew up from Southern Connecticut, so I've always known like the Islanders, Bruins, uh, Rangers, Buffalo, uh, Caps, like Devils very well growing up. So, and fun fact, actually, Martin Bredore, or Corey Schneider, I take that back, Corey Schneider. Corey Schneider, Corey Schneider moved into my hometown a couple oh, blocks yeah. over. Is so one of the two? Yep. All right. Last one. Do you have any funny memories you want to share while at Boston College or uh, your process of getting drafted? Just something just uh, for my audience? Uh, yeah, I mean... Fun fact, when I was when I got drafted the last year, I was actually stuck in dead stop traffic on the highway, like screaming at traffic, honking my horn. And all of a sudden, I got a call with a New Jersey uh, area code, and I was like, well, I got to call myself for this. This could be important. So that's kind of my funny story. Doing whatever it takes. Thank you so much, Charlie, Thank for jo for joining me on today's episode, yes, and uh, we hope to see you real soon. Yep. Before we continue with today's episode, let me tell you guys about Bird Dog. So Bird Dogs makes you look good, and their stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. They fit better than regular shorts, and they're made of stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL or enter the promo code locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NHL or promo code locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler. Trust me, you won't want to take your bird dogs off. I promise you. All right, let's move on from one fourth round selection to the other. Cam Squires was drafted by the Devils in this year's draft at 122nd overall. Now, there isn't a scouting report of him on elite prospects, but what you need to know is that the numbers that he put up for the Cape Breton Eagles is that he appeared in 67 games. He had 30 goals, 34 assists for a grand total of 64 points. Now, Here's the thing. He describes his game sort of as Mitch Marner. And as we all know, Marner was a finalist for the Selkie Trophy not too long ago. And that means that Squires likes to play both ends of the rink, both on the offensive side of things and on the defensive matter. So what player likes to do that on the Devils roster currently? That would be Nico Heischer. So I think that's a better example to compare Cam Squires too for the time being so Squires once again I had the chance to speak with him one-on-one -on -one in the Devils locker room now just a full disclaimer if you're watching on YouTube I apologize for the glare it was in the locker room lighting's not the best and I, options were limited in terms of where I could place my camera I put it on the ping pong table in, in the center of the locker room I don't think I was allowed to do that but still uh, just just giving that full disclaimer so Here's what Cam had to say when I asked him a series of questions after day two of development camp. How have things been going so far in development camp? I know we talked a little about it off camera, but can you just tell my audience how things have been going so far? Yeah, it's been going good. I mean, you know, meeting everybody and seeing all the new faces and all the prospects is a lot of fun. I mean, coming in here as a younger guy, just looking to soak everything up and, you know, learn as much and take as much as I can and, and uh, you know, continue to grow my game. For people who might be unfamiliar with your game, can you describe it? What are some of the strengths uh, you have? Yeah, so I'm a smart, skilled forward. Uh, I see the ice very well. You know, hockey IQ is my calling card, and I feel I can create plays, and, you know, I'm energetic and exciting to watch in all three zones. Uh, this past season, I've grown a lot as a 200-foot player, just getting better in all three zones and, and really taking my game to an overall, uh, you know, top-notch and, and higher level. You were drafted by the Devils in this year's draft. What was that uh, whole process like uh, getting drafted in the first place? 
Yeah, it was exciting. I mean, you go there and there's so many, so many prospects sitting in the stands with their families and stuff, and you get to see the experience. And you know, being in Nashville with my family was, you know, a week and you know, a few days I'll never forget in my life. It was exciting, you know, every nerve wracking at the same time. But you just look to stay present and you know, be where your feet are at and uh, continue to go from there. And I was really happy to to hear my name called by the Devils. And, you know, to be here this week is is really exciting. Dream come true. So, were you familiar with the Devils organization at all prior to the draft? Uh, yeah, a bit. You know, grew up watched them on TV like any other kid, and you know, I trained in PEI, and uh, Ryan Graves was there before, so he was a Devils player for a bit. You know, just signed that deal with Pittsburgh, but you know, getting to know him and talking to him, he's he's giving me some some feedback about the organization. You know, nothing but good things to say, and you know, just getting here and getting a feel for the city has been good too. How did uh, this past season go from your end? Like, what were some of the uh, best achievements uh, from your perspective? Yeah, I think, you know, our team grew as a, as a whole, really. Uh, we got a lot better, had another new coach this year, and then, you know, a new group of players, a lot of trades. Uh, but we got a lot better. We grew from day one as a group, and, you know, we strung together some wins here and there. And by the end of the season, come playoff time, we were coming together. And, you know, obviously not the outcome we wanted to get in playoffs versus Halifax, but we, we were, you know, we made a lot of steps in the right direction. Okay, last couple questions. Who do you model your game after? Uh, you know, one guy that I always said growing up was would be Mitch Marner. Um, you know, I, I like the way he thinks the game and, and you know, uh, just sees the ice crate plays. He's fun to watch. Okay. My last question is, any funny stories you want to share with us uh, maybe prior to or during the draft or maybe uh, during this camp or something uh, intriguing you want to share? Um. There hasn't been too much so far. I mean, it's just so early on, so we're looking forward. You know, we got the, you know, some team events here and there, and we're going to go visit the hospital and stuff. So it, a lot of good things lined up, but nothing so far, I don't think, that stands out. I mean, it's just been really fun meeting all the players and stuff and seeing their different stories so far. Well, we'll see you down the line, and thank you for joining me on yeah, today's thank episode. You. Thanks for having me. Now, the final prospect that I want to talk about on today's episode is Josh Philman. I hope I'm pronouncing uh, his name correctly, but he was selected in the sixth round in last year's draft. So here's what Elite Prospects has to say about him. He'll sprint into the lane, draw a defender, and then hit the brakes, creating a passing lane for his teammates and space for his shot. Where most players plant themselves in front of the net, he sneaks away from the defenders to the far post. Those off-puck instincts complement a projectable NHL shot, especially off the pass. Philman doesn't dust off the puck using the momentum of the pass to transfer his weight for the shot. Now, he did suit up in four games for the Utica Comets. He was able to score a goal, but while he was playing in the WHL as an assistant captain for the Swift Current Broncos, he appeared in 64 games. He had 47 goals. 28 assists for a grand total of 75 points. Now, I one of my questions for Philmon was like asking him like what was one of his greatest achievements this past year. And you're going to hear it in the soundbite, but I just got to address it. He nonchalantly said that he scored like like six goals in a game or or something like that. And I'm just like, "Dude, that is impressive." So, he he cracks me up. I'm just trying to remember what he said off the top of my head. So, I had a chance to speak with him yesterday after day one of development camp but obviously i had some other prospects to discuss so i'm playing his sound bites in today's episode now this was a media scrum so it was not a one-on-one -on -one interview similar to what i did for letty and squires but here's what philman had to say when i had the chance to catch up with them in the locker room after development camp wrapped up for day one um you know another thing that teams over the last year just with all draft process told me to improve upon was getting to the middle of the ice more um, and I definitely did that scoring um, you know I think I doubled my goal total this year from from my draft year so um, yeah it's it's been great um, and just yeah looking to keep on improving how did your couple games get a good go it was great I mean I got to score my <laughs> first goal which was pretty cool and uh, it definitely helps like going back to junior after having an NHL camp um, under your belt and then on top of that playing pro games in, in Utica at the end of the season it just makes the transition back so much easier and, and gives you that much more confidence playing against guys your own age and have the speed feel to the difference between WHL versus AHL it's definitely faster um, it wasn't anything like super crazy I'd say the more challenging piece was just winning loose puck battles is so much harder um, and then puck possession like when, when you give it up it's a lot harder to get it back against grown men than it is against kids right 
And you said you were here last year. Is there anything that the organization said to you that they wanted you to work on that you felt like you accomplished now a year later? Similar to a lot of other teams. Just get bigger and stronger. Um, and then, yeah, don't, don't rush anything. Um, just keep working hard. Let the game come to you. For, for people who might be unfamiliar, uh, how would you describe your overall game? What are some of your strengths? Uh, I would say I'm you know, an offensive winger. Uh, I like to score goals, get to the front of the net, um, and I like to play fast. Um, so, you know, playing away from the puck has always been a bit of a strength of mine, uh, getting open, finding soft spots. So, um, yeah, I like to play fast, and I like to be a, you know, a slashing winger that can score. What are some of the goals you have for yourself this upcoming season? Um, one would be to try and crack the Canadian World Junior team at Christmas. Um, it's not going to be easy, but that would be a, you know, a, an experience of a lifetime. Did you put on an OR weight from last year or this year? Can I ask that question? Yeah. You did? Yeah, it's, <laughs> since the end of my junior season, probably about, probably about 15 pounds, maybe 16 pounds. Okay. So, yeah, it, it's coming. It's coming. It just, just took a while. And the things that we don't see, you guys do nutrition and all yeah. that kind of stuff behind yeah. the scenes, right? I'm yeah. sorry, love that. Yeah, they've got um, a great staff here. That helps a lot. So the other thing is I got some allergies to like nuts and fish, which is if you want to put on weight, a lot of, like people just tell you to eat handfuls of nuts and stuff like that. So, um, But our nutritionist here actually has a nut allergy too, so that's pretty helpful that uh, she can just throw some ideas um, out that, you know, because she's been through it before, right? Have you spent any time in the area around here at all? Not really. No, still pretty new. Um, when I was here at, at main camp last fall, even our hotel was like 40 minutes away. So I haven't been in the downtown area much. Okay, but you've, um, you can't, grew up in Western Canada, right? Yeah. Is yeah. it different being here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little different. But uh, honestly, like Winnipeg, which where is where I'm from, is pretty similar in size, um, similar downtown. And then, um, so it, it's, it's not crazy different, but just the lifestyle is different. For anybody who didn't see, what were some of your personal highlights this past season? Um, well, I, I scored six goals in a game, which is pretty cool. Um, that's the most I've ever scored in a game, so I, that was probably a highlight. Um, and then, yeah, I got to be part of a leadership group this year in junior, which is pretty special to me, and I'll look to build off that, that next year. I joined uh, this uh, media availability a little late, so I'm not sure if you've uh, answered this, but what are some of the things you're working on this offseason to better your game this upcoming year? Uh, for sure, just working hard in the gym, um, and yeah, just trying to get bigger and stronger, and then learning how to, well, on top of that, learning how to carry my speed better. Um, I've always been, you know, kind of quick, but having being able to like stay low and just carry your speed around defenders um, and wide ice and then you know cutting off half walls slash into the net that's something I need to get better at and I'll look to improve upon that. Any, any NHLers that you study that you style your game after maybe even Devils? Yeah um, I wa I'm from Winnipeg right so I watch a lot of the Jets. Kyle Connor would be a guy who's unbelievable at being shifty um, around the net and just slashing gaps so that's that's a guy that I like to model my game after for sure. It's always hard to jump in and you know be fully acclimated um, in four games, but I think I was getting better each game I played, um, and more so just take away from the experience, like submerging yourself in an environment with pro players. Um, you don't necessarily notice it right away, but you just slowly pick up on their habits, right? So um, it was more so about that, and then just yeah, adjusting myself to the pace early on, so that. When I go in next year and when I go back to junior, everything just slows down for me. This is Landon, your, your trajectory. Um, it really all depends, right? Um, assuming I stay healthy over the next couple of years, um, my goal is, I mean, I'm only 19, so I got to go back to the CHL for one more year. Um, and then obviously I would try and turn pro um, the following year, whether that's in New Jersey or Utica. But anytime you're at a camp, you're always just trying to make the team, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether that's realistic or not you're just trying to put your best foot forward and, and make a good impression so i hope you guys enjoyed my media scrum with josh Philman and also my one-on-one -on -one interviews with charlie letty and cam squires and let me know what you guys think in the comment section if you're watching on youtube who should i keep my eye on the rest of development camp and also if you're listening on a podcast streaming service hit me up on my personal twitter page at train Matt four or the show's twitter page at locked on devils as for this episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again. Day three at Development Camp is right around the corner.